me playing fam. <laughs> hey, playing fam. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Jacqueline. David is making noise. David's making a bunch of noise. Why is my hair stuck? To this is disgusting. What is Don't give it to me. There's hair stuck to the water pitcher. That's fine. Anyway, hi. Um, if you're not new here, thank you for coming back. I appreciate you. So today, we have a very cat. <laughs> you look like a dog. <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> Is that how you dry your hair? Yes. Every time. <laughs> you're cute. I try. Okay. Anyway, enough with the distractions. So, today, I promised you guys that I would show you how I propagate my Hoya. So if you missed it while I was in South Carolina, Liz went scissor happy on her Hoyas <laughs> and gave me a bunch of cuttings. So I actually forgot to ask her what one of them is. Maybe you guys know. I have kind of an idea, but I'm not 100%. So I've got, let me grab them. I popped them into water because they were just like in a bag for days um, just to kind of like rehydrate them except for this one wouldn't fit and then um, ignore the mess in the kitchen behind me I made a mossy perlite mix a bucket of it and oh, I didn't do a very good job mixing it though and um, I made I made a mess in the process but We've got a bunch of Hoya cuttings to transfer into our Mossy Perlite mix. I've got all my little plastic cups. I've got my bigger ones for some of the larger plants. I have my repotting mat. This one is from Mats by Cat. I can link it down below for you guys. She's really sweet. She's in Massachusetts and she makes really nice quality mats. This one's called Mermazing. <laughs> because it looks like a mermaid and obviously it's amazing. So I have another one that's like black with glitter, but this one's a little bit smaller. We don't need a big one today. So I'm going for the small square one. Highly recommend investing in a good repotting mat. I like to use these for all of my plant chores. Like, especially if I'm watering, I'll fold this up and I'll put it next to the sink. That way, as I'm watering, I can just plop everything down right here and let it drain out and not have to uh, worry about it. So, highly recommend. Plus, it's really pretty. It shows up on camera like a lot more yellow than it is. It's more like purple, purpley pink and blue. So, um, yeah, let's try and go through these Hoya and see if I can remember what they are. So this is just um, a little container of Hoya species affinity Bertoniae because hers was getting crazy long and she had already like propagated it a bunch so she didn't want to propagate more and I don't blame her because I have a massive one that I'm literally always propagating. Um, so she gave me these cuttings and I'm just going to root them up and put them up on my website for you guys because I know uh, you're always looking for, for this one. So if you don't have it and you can't find it in the big box store, I'm just going to put all this into one container and sell it as like one big plant because usually I do smaller cuttings because mine I cut it so much that there really isn't like a ton left on there to be taking um, large cuttings like that. So the next one I have in here is a Hoya Polynura cutting because mine is just a little wee baby and it doesn't really do anything. So I'm hoping that um, I can just keep on maybe collecting cuttings and sticking them in and making a nice full pot. Hers was gorgeous. If you guys missed, you should definitely go and check it out. I'll link it for you up here um her tour we did of all of her um hoya so hoya polynura this one is the the next one is the one i'm probably most excited about because it is the hoya lacanosa um i think it's called asami variegated it's got these cute like outer uh little variegation and i'm not mad about it so 
we're gonna get this one nice and rooted up hopefully and then next she gave me a cutting of her Hoya Rangsan which I do have a small one of although honestly I think I just threw it out because I think it was dead I put it like in a corner over here and forgot that it was there um so we're gonna start over <laughs> with this one this is a really easy to find Hoya but I think it's super underrated it has really gorgeous splash on the leaves so I'm not mad about that she also gave me a cutting of her Hoya was this Angleriana it kind of looks like my Angleriana but it might be something different I think it's Angleriana I don't know but I have a small cutting of it and hopefully I can get this one to root as well because I have definitely like kind of struggled with the other one um, so there is that and then this is the Hoya Fua Ua Ua Fua Ua Fua Ua Wences <laughs> Fua Ua um, it looks like caudata but it's not I promise you the caudata is thinner and it has like more wrinkly leaves and this one is like softer so I'm excited to finally have this one in my collection I never bought it just because it is so similar to the caudata but once I saw them side by side in her collection I was like wait a minute no that's different and I need it so this next one is Hoya Bermanica it's looking a little bit thirsty I've had it in water um, and it's perked up like a little bit, but I'm really hoping that I can keep this one happy because this is definitely one that's been on my wish list for a long time. I imported it. The import failed. It did not acclimate and it died. So hopefully we can get that one to root. And the one I'm unsure of is this one. Um, it looks like sunrise, but I don't think it's sunrise. I'm not 100% positive. It's, it kind of looks like Obscura, but not as veiny. So maybe like um, Rebecca? No, I don't think it's Rebecca. I'm not 100% positive. Oh, you sneaky little mealybug. I see you and I just killed you. Um, yeah, so I don't remember. I'm gonna have to ask her what this is or go back and watch the, the video so that I can properly label these but um, that is that and then she gave me these two massive cuttings of Hoya I think it's Skinneriana D's big one or something along those lines I know it's called D's big one but I don't remember the name before it so hers was massive and out of control and she wanted to cut it back I was like girl you don't need to cut that much of the plant but she definitely went a little scissor happy um, but that's fine I'm not mad about it I gave her some cuttings of mine as well and uh, not as many because I don't have as much to cut as she does but um yeah pretty much just going to move you so you can see what I'm doing but I'm gonna just put each one in their little cuppy cup with some moss so most of these are pretty small so I'm gonna be using these little plastic cups off of Amazon they're literally just little plastic cups that you would see like at the dentist so um let's start with something easy. Oh, I should have brought my clips. I have like little clips to help hold the cuttings in place, which is like a game changer for propagating Hoya because sometimes they're just like awkward and it's hard to keep them like in their container. So when it comes to the moss and the perlite, I definitely recommend rinsing it beforehand. So I'll soak the moss for a few minutes and then let it drain out once it's all fully saturated and then I'll take a container like this that has drainage and I'll scoop 
I'll scoop up the perlite and rinse it through and then plop it in there. That is the safest way to work with perlite because perlite dust is really harmful to breathe in and um, keeping it wet will prevent the dust from, from coming up into your face and then you're rinsing most of it off by doing that, if that makes sense. So Hoya Rang San, and then I'm literally gonna plop all of these into a plastic container, but I actually have you propped up on top of that plastic container. So I'm just gonna set them aside for right now. And we're just gonna repeat the process. So if you already have this mixed up, it's gonna make your life and all of this, this whole process like just a whole lot easier. And we don't need a lot. I like to mix my moss and my perlite together because rooting in moss can be a little bit tricky when it comes to removing the plant and separating the roots from the moss. So I like to add the perlite in there because it just helps create some space as well as aeration for the moss. So here is the Lacanosa. Asami, I'm pretty sure, is what this one is called. I'm going to double check everything. Should I cut it and propagate two pieces? I feel like I should. I feel like I should get rid of this little bottom leaf here. So I'll do this with longer propagations just to make like a more full baby plant. Plus having like that really long, awkward stem is not always like my favorite for propagating because it's impossible to put it in a container that way so we are gonna have two little two little props very very cute that's gonna be a lot easier to manage um than the one long strand. Hopefully this one isn't as hard to propagate as some of the other similar varieties can be. I have a really hard time with the Croniana silver, but that's fine. <laughs> so next we have this mystery cutting. I'm not sure what it is, um, but I am going to leave it as one full piece just because I think it looks really cute trailing. Um, and I don't want to cut it up because that's how it how it was. It was trailing, and I can't remember. I can't remember what it is. I want to say that it's an obscura, but like I have more than one obscura, and it doesn't look exactly the same. So I'm not sure. I'll have to find out. Unless you guys know. If you know, then definitely help a sister out. Usually I'm quite good at IDing Hoya, but as you know, a lot of Hoya kind of look exactly the same. And it can be really difficult to tell them apart if you don't have like both plants in front of you to compare if that makes sense. Like what I did with this Fua Ua Ua Wensis. <laughs> you know, when you don't have them next to each other, they look like the same plant. But as soon as you put that next to the caudata, you can tell that it's a different plant. So that is this one. Three Hoya down. See how quickly this goes when I already have my moss and perlite mixed together. You do not have to propagate this way. I have a lot of success like this. I do tend to keep my Hoya for the first like week or so after I cut it. I'll put them in water just to kind of stabilize them and maybe even get them rooting just like a tiny bit. It just kind of gives them a bit of a head start. And then I'll move them to the moss perlite mix. And the reason why I move them is because in the moss, they are going to grow roots that are more similar to soil roots. If I were to leave them in water for a long time and then try to transfer them 
to soil, they might fail. They might go into shock because they have water roots. Water roots are different than soil roots. So by using the mossy perlite mix, I'm getting more of that soil root as opposed to that water root that is, you know, just going to go into shock once you put it into soil. So that is why I prefer this method. I don't use this method for every single plant. Some plants are just really easy, to, almost too easy to propagate in water, like most philodendrons and, and pothos and stuff, that it wouldn't make sense to put them in anything else besides water. And they transfer over usually completely fine. But Hoya roots are a lot more delicate than people give them credit for. Um they don't have like really big root systems it takes them years and years and years to get really large established root systems that's why it's good to leave your hoya in smaller containers they like to be like more snug in their container for sure um and that that's pretty much why they don't really develop a crazy amount of root so this one's already poking out poking out a little baby root in the water there which they'll start to do so i feel like the water activates root growth the fastest but the moss and the perlite are gonna give them stronger roots that are gonna just survive better once you transfer I mean if you're gonna grow them in like pond or leka then it does not matter um, a lot of people like to use fluval stratum um, to propagate if you are into that that is gonna need I usually recommend like a water reservoir for something like that so what I'll do is I'll poke holes in here if this was my fluval and then I would have one without holes and I would put it in there and just keep a little bit of water in that bottom container for the fluval to soak up. I have a hard time remembering to water my propagations in fluval or just in general. So um, I just, I don't do well with it. There's the bromanica, hoping that it perks up. That is why I put them into a plastic container. So just like another tub like this with a couple of air holes and a lid. Um, and then it's kind of like just set it and forget it with Hoya cuttings like that. So I really enjoy that because then within a few weeks, I've got roots and happy Hoya that I can take out of, out of the container. So never mad about that. Got the Fua Ua Ua Ua. <laughs> I don't know. I just like saying it. I'm in a silly mood today. So there's that. I'm just making sure everything is nice and secure in here. Cute. Okay. Now I have these Bertonia cuttings. Oh, I forgot about this guy. Can't forget about this guy. Little, uh, I think it's an Anglariana. If it is, I'll move it to my, to the prop I have. I have another one propagating in my cabinet. That's just like not really doing well. But if they're the same, I gotta inspect their leaf shape. Suspect they might be a little bit different, but I genuinely don't know. Um, okay, so let's get this. nice species affinity bertonia all set up these root really quickly so i have other hoya cuttings that are also rooting up that i will be throwing up in the shop soon definitely go and follow me on instagram though if you're not already because sometimes i don't feel like posting stuff in the shop and i'll just throw it on my instagram story because it's faster and easier <laughs> so you know 
if you have an Instagram, it's definitely a good, a good idea to give your favorite creators a follow over there so you can keep up on a more day-to-day -day basis. I post lots of pictures of my snakes and my kitties and my plants that I don't always post here. Sometimes I post onto my community tab, but I forget. So just sticking these cuttings in here. It's gonna be a wonky one until it can kind of like straighten itself out because it was trailing but I think it's going to make a really nice trailing plant for someone. These leaves are going to sort themselves out and not be upside down, hopefully. <laughs> you put them this way. Nope, they're still upside down. They just want to be upside down. Um, this came off of like a really long trailing plant, so it's understandable. Maybe I should cut them. Yeah, I should probably cut them. Okay, let's do that. I'll just make a bushier plant. You know, never a bad thing. This Koya bleeds a lot, so definitely do it over something if you're going to cut it and wipe it off of the leaves. If it gets on any of the other leaves, it will like stay there and leave a mark, which can be irritating. It's a bleeder. Yeah, this is gonna be a lot better. It's gonna be a nice, little baby starter plant for somebody. It's <laughs> like a bouquet. A bouquet of Bertoniae. Very cute. Okay, so the only one I have left is this larger one, and I'm gonna put it in one of these. You know, I get this super moss, and it's supposed to be like better, but it still has like twigs and crap in it and it's so irritating what does a girl gotta do for twigless moss okay i don't know if i want to cut this one it was like on a trellis so i might just like re-trellis it you can tell because it's like curved here um this is i'm gonna have a hard time with this one so this stem is really really long so it's gonna like have a hard time staying up so I'm gonna cut some of it off which I don't love doing because it was calloused calloused over but it'll be fine it's easier to stick that in there with a slightly shorter Stem. If there's any like little nodules though, I don't want to cut those off because roots actually grow from there faster and easier. I don't know what to do with this. Should I trellis it? It's got this long, this long tendril. I feel like I should put it on it trellis but then I'm not gonna be able to put it in a prop box I don't know I don't know it's a really nice plant though and I don't want to cut it because I want to start with like a full plant all right I'm gonna go grab a little trellis I think I have a small one somewhere um and stick it in stick it in there okay so I couldn't find the black one that I wanted to use. I have these bamboo ones, or I just have like this um, wire one, but it's this one's pretty flimsy. So like, I don't think it's gonna work. Um, 
So I think I'm going to have to use this one, which is going to be interesting. Okay. I, yeah, I have like these black wire ones, but I don't know, I don't know where they went. So, oh, I should have probably got my clips too. That would have been helpful. Oh, girl, you're a mess. Well, thankfully we have plenty of these. I also brought over my little um, pins in case I need them for any of these cuttings. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. Don't want to harm the baby leaves. And this is an even bigger trellis than what it was on, apparently. But I think it's going to be happy on here. Can't really see what I'm doing, can you? Okay, so then I'm going to move this one to go around the other side. I think this is going to be really cute, you guys. got this. Some of these clips are a little bit small, but that's okay. As long as they hold, that's all that matters. Mm -mm, looks like dead, dead stem. So I'm going to cut that. And that's what it's looking like. I think it looks really cute. It's got these two new baby leaves coming in up here that hopefully are not going to die. Because sometimes they do that. They just like kill themselves because they, um, the plant is like stressed out or whatever. Which like, I get it girl, but can we not? So I'm just filling it in, make sure it's nice and snug in there and I'm pretty excited to watch these grow so I made like a ton of mossy perlite it's actually probably not even going to be enough because I have to transfer my philodendron florida ghosts that I imported they're sitting right here in water still um, they need to be transferred over into the mossy perlite as well. So that is it. I'm going to move you so you can see my stupid face. Um, so I'm definitely not mad about this. This one is really stinking cute. I'm going to try and find a little terracotta to put it in and then put it in my bedroom. These bamboo trellises just like they're so bendy, like they twist and it's annoying but um I'm not mad about it I think it's gonna be really really cute so we have that one two boom three boom this one which is gonna be for one of you guys whoever decides to buy it should be ready in like a week or two rude um, another one, we've got lots, lots of little Hoya babies that I am excited to watch grow. How many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. She gave me nine Hoya cuttings or different Hoyas anyway. So that is it for this video, you guys. I hope you found it 
helpful. Um, I hope you enjoyed hanging out with me. If you did, you should definitely give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell. We got Hoya Sirens. Hit the notification bell uh, so you don't miss anything from me. There's a join button down there if you want to be part of the official plant fam. Get yourself some perky perks. If not, there's a super thanks button if you want to super thanks me. Everything is appreciated. Literally cannot do this without you guys. I am just going to put a clip in this one. See how much easier it makes life. Now I don't have to worry about this Hoya coming out of here. Um, yeah, so... So that's it. That's it for this video. I um, hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are out there in the world. And um, I love you. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.